All right, welcome to another episode of Guy Talk with Joe and Thor, Red Pill Thor, at Red Pill Thor on Instagram and at Proud Masculine on Instagram. So today, Thor, we're going to talk about the importance of not making a woman the center of your life, the center of your world. So important, Joe. It is definitely important. Uh, and not man. just for young guys either. Not just for young guys. It's uh, guys, as you know, love idealistically. And so to develop the idea that your woman is all important and that your life surrounds this is, is kind of a nice fanciful thought that is fed by our society today. All of the Disney movies you've ever watched, the romance novels. Uh, but it is actually quite detrimental to a man's own health. And on top of that, it actually destroys his attractiveness to the females, without a doubt. And uh, if a guy is too consumed with a woman, it actually appears his weakness. I, c I could tell you in my own life, I've watched a young man get in trouble with his woman that he pedestalized. She gave him grief and what did he do but start crying? Oh, please don't be mad at me. Now, really, do you think that's going to help him get some brownie points later? All the brownie points that he had on the refrigerator at that point in time were vanished. You know, they were all gone. And, you know, Pookie and Ray Ray, they have more brownie points now. So you know where that's going. Mm. What are your thoughts on that? <laughs> no, absolutely. Um, here's the thing. The reason you become attractive to women the reason you, I say you as in men who, you know, and some men stumble into this shit accidentally, not even know what they're doing, just because they have something that they're passionate about or something emotionally compelling that they're pursuing in their life, whether it be their job, their hobbies, their friends, their social circle, you know, just guys who are involved and have interests. And what that does is that, that in itself is attractive. You know, especially if it's a passion of yours that you're pursuing, that makes a difference. Like you and I have our endeavors here with our brands at Red Bull Thor and Proud Masculine. That's something that emotionally compels me. I'm passionate about that. So my focus, this, this con these conversations, my interactions with men, clients, get my best. So I perform at my best and that when you are operating from that on a regular basis, that's attractive to everyone. That's magnetic. People see you full of zeal and you, you know, I've seen people who have nothing to live for couch potatoes. They, they do no energy whatsoever. It, it's flat. It's like, eh, you know, or, you know, people who are complainers, they bring another kind of energy, like a heaviness, like you don't want to be around. It just feels uncomfortable and heavy and dark. People like you, people like me, people like we know that are like, yes, let's get this. You know, we're doing this. You know, I love helping these men. That charges you up and that is palpable. And so where do women, the two primary things, that are detrimental to, um, you know, I guess gaining attraction or, or the two main functions of a woman or the two most appealing things are emotions and attention. When you have focused on something that emotionally compels you and that you're passionate about, that you feel like is your purpose, that you're going to make a difference in this world, do it. That's getting you that you're that's what's getting your attention on a consistent basis. And what's one thing a woman can't stand is when they're not being paid attention to. So then they have to work for it. And that's a challenge for them. So then that also does what? Spikes those emotions. So now she's emotional. See, she's you. You're the fucking centerpiece of her emotional world at that point. She's gonna feed off of your energy your emotion. If you're showing up all do, you know, dull and gloomy all the time, she's going to start picking up on that. She's going to start feeling that. And that's going to repel. You show up upbeat, excited, enthusiastic, passionate. She starts feeding off of that. And she becomes upside enthusiastic. 
you know, she's like, whoa, she's overcome with that emotional, that dope hit that it's like heroin for them. And so then, you know, plus that says a lot. It, it says so many other, there's so many other underlying characteristics that come along with that, that says that you're committed, you, uh, you have commitment, you have discipline, you have the ability to see something through, you have the ability to think and come up with great ideas and strategize and all the, all of the characteristics of someone that a woman would love to be led by. Mm. So, and they see you making progress, making success. Then they see people coming to you for life advice or guidance or direction, or just somebody that you are a good listening ear for because they know you understand them. And the women look up to that. Yes, they do. Now, now back to your main point on um, idolizing women. It, oh, wait, I never got I, to finish. I'm sorry. Let me okay. finish real quick. But so then what happens is if you make a woman the center of your life and you lose touch with that, and, and you know, so you in this zone, you in this fucking, you got your blinders on, you're pursuing, you on a mission, you're on your purpose. And this woman sees fit to go do something else but do someone else besides you or pursue someone else or, you know, guess what? You're like, okay, well, that's fucked up, but I got this. So whatever, I'm back on it. And, you know, it sucks. It hurts a little bit. It stings, but you don't really miss a beat because you're still doing what you're intended to do. And this is what men are supposed to do. Men are supposed to have a purpose. Men are supposed to be pursuing and, you know, accomplishing. And this is what feeds us to grow and, thrive whereas if you're not having if you don't have anything and you're making her the center of your life a she does not want that pressure she does not want to be the one that's holding you up she doesn't want to have to risk the the uh possibility of disappointing you or she doesn't want like she doesn't want you looking to her and pedestalizing her she's looking at you to lead her and lead the the interaction the relationship, whatever it may be. She's looking for you for leadership. She doesn't want that pressure. They're not built for that. They're not designed for that. And then you leaning on her as that centerpiece, that focal point of your life, that is uncomfortable. That is an undue amount of pressure that she does not want. That will repel her. And then when she does go, you spent so much time on that and nothing else, you've got nothing but the fucking hurt locker you're in because she's gone and you crushed and uh, which, you know, you know, that could lead to, you know, knock on wood. We don't want to see that happen, but men kill themselves over that shit. Take their own yeah. lives. They, they do. But the majority of men out there in Western society right now, it's, it's really the easy pill because we've been taught to idolize the woman and to yeah. put the woman first. And there's some instinctual, components or firmware within a man to protect so it plays into that part of our instincts ideology ideology is a very powerful thing and it blinds us to much but it also can make us focused on things look at it throughout history religion politics wars ideology blinds us to reality and things we cannot control um and yet men do love idealistically it's a, it's an easy concept for us to grasp Sure. And uh, it's been marketed that way. Now, realizing that that uh, uh, women do not love that way, they love objectively. Two different mating strategies there, right? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, idolizing a woman does make you lose value. Uh, it may be cute at first, right? Maybe very cute thing to do. I'm doing everything. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. Flowers, all that stuff. But as these women become more sophisticated and educated, when I say sophisticated, just think they know the ways of the world, they, their hypergamy is op in the open now, which states, uh, at least using Prado's principle, that 80% of uh, all women, well, let's back up, 100% of women, the studies are showing, are very interested sexually in only 20% of the men and want relationships with them. That's been a very successful strategy. I believe it's probably been there since the dawn of human beings. 
Uh, they want the best possible mate they can get because they're very vulnerable rearing children. Uh, and uh, that could disappear at a moment and hence the war brides, they can change their mind just like that. A woman always reserves the right to change her mind. You may bring her flowers today and she's happy and tomorrow, no, your flowers aren't good, his flowers are. So uh, a man needs to go into relationships with his eyes wide open. Um, you cannot do everything right. If you think you do everything right that society and religion tell you today and that the advice you get at work tells you to do this, oh, you're in trouble now. You better stop on the store on the way home and get some flowers, yeah. candies. It, it, none of that is real. You, you need to improve yourself so that you maintain attraction. Maintaining attraction in a relationship is forever. You don't get the brass ring on the merry-go-round when you lock that pussy down. No. I'm sorry, but whether it's a long-term or a marriage, that's not easy street. Oh, I got a steady supply now. Guess what? You know, uh, no, no. I don't have to go out and earn it anymore. No. That's what idealism leads to, though. And it's very common. And uh, let me tell you, when you're doing that, you're getting high on your own supply. And the quality's not that good. Well, so here's the thing. It, with the men loving idealistically and Thor, there is the large majority of men do not know about that, about women loving objectively. Men think that women love them the same way. Well, I put all this time in with her and all these years in and I did this and I, I, that doesn't mean shit to her a week later. Let me just make no. that very clear. Sometimes and I'll tell you that right, right now, if you ask a woman and she's in love with you, I, I, they honestly believe they're willing to take a bullet for you. But by God, once that's built up in them, the day after tomorrow, it could be different. But right now, right now, she believes that. And so, it's probably true in the moment. I'm not even doubting that. You but have to maintain it. It's, yeah, and that's right. So your idealistic thinking has you thinking that she's thinking the same thing I am. She stuck it out. She's done this. She's done that for me. You know, we were talking about this earlier, like all the shit that she put up with from me so you know uh she gets my best and you know if shit gets tough you know i'll remember that and that'll i will respond to that accordingly to that loyalty and that level of commitment and dedication that's not how it works for them and it's not look i'm not demonizing it either that just is it's nature and they have to be built like that they're built like that for a reason it's not an evil it's not a bad thing so and so your point about loving idealistically causes complacency because we'll put up with more from them in terms of, you know, long-term slacking off. Right or wrong? Wife goggles? Oh, of course. Goggles. Wife goggles is a very real thing. So, uh, it's a very real thing. And I, I believe it's actually an instinctual response to a long-term relationship and rearing children. Yeah, yeah, that's, a, that's you end up seeing her, even though she may have gained 40 pounds, you see her as you saw her from the beginning. That's part of that idealism. Now, what would you tell a man that has this ideology and he's later in life like us and it evaporates from him because it was wrong in his relationship? How does he cope with it? It's a very tough thing to do and it turns a lot of guys to the red pill and they get very angry because they feel really, really abused because that idealism is crushed. What you really need to do is you need to turn that idealism in towards your own stoic philosophies and or make the idealism focus on making yourself a better version of yourself every day and learn to become satisfied with that in the here and the now. Not about yesterday. I might have not done my workout yesterday or I might not have done my study, but today I did. And that's good enough. Make well, those small steps. That kind of idealism that's focused inward, uh, Rollo says it better than anybody, but it's really the cure to this kind of idealistic love is uh, making your yourself your own mental point of origin. When you do that, the woman, it seems as though they're more interested in you. It seems as though they can even generate more affection, attention, and love for you. Yes. Because they're happy to do so. 
and they're fulfilled doing that for you and being your complement. And it does, it seems counterintuitive if you're on the outside as a blue pillar or just a, a person that's followed all the rules looking in. It seems counterintuitive, yet I challenge everybody to do this. Look around you to the guys that are most successful with women or have the longest uh, relationships that are very fulfilling and might I dare say happy. And it's those that complement each other and, and do that. Each one is taking care of themselves and they're replacing that idealism with that. And so oh. together it's the yin and the yang and they're better together than they are apart. Well, you know, and that ties into what I was saying earlier about that energy, about that aura about you, that they feed off of that. And what they're basically doing is mirroring you. When you turn that love, that idealistic love inward for yourself, they mirror that shit. They yeah. want to, they want to emulate that. They want to, uh, satisfy that they want to follow that and i've had this conversation with people before guys who do that guys who oh let me ask the boss you know those type guys and it's not well received but you know when it comes down to a person when something like this does happen in a man's life and they have no choice but to at least hear the truth believe it or not is a different subject but they have to hear it um it's not an easy pill to swallow and it doesn't go away immediately. No, it takes time. It is not an overnight fix. It takes time. You don't time. learn. Okay. She's, she loves objectively. I love ideas. Oh, okay. Now that makes sense. Let me move on and go that better and take better care of myself. It doesn't work like that. It takes time. It's a process. Just like, just like being red pilled. That's yeah, and, and, and neither type or style of love is i mean this is very fundamental of course but neither one is better than the other they're designed they're designed that way by our biological instinct and what drives us right. seriously and that's what i'm saying survival about survival is number one and then procreation and if you think about it on the lowest term like that even lower than the love languages and all that that is yeah. the lowest it's survival and then procreation everything that is done in this behavior world between men and women is for those two purposes. That's it. There really is nothing else. They will fit in those categories. Well, and here we go. And that's why I said earlier, like they do it. They love, they have that. Uh, they love objectively. It's not evil. It's not no, evil. It's, it's not evil, gentlemen. She is it's a beautiful thing actually, because it, it makes us better. Exactly. And I like being better. So do I. I it, <laughs> And if because you the, the level of female attention you get, guys, it's almost overwhelming. It's such a joy. It's such a joy. And, and I can't explain it. Until you've been there, you just won't know. But the journey's half the fun. Yeah. And then, so, and if you pay attention to um, how she responds, and you don't take it personally, you can learn a lot. You yes. can really know where you are right now as a man in her eyes, based on knowing that she's loving objectively, something's off. And if you don't take it personally, because, and this is, this is what happens because men don't understand this. They want to be like, well, I don't understand what the fuck's going on. No, Why Joe, what you just said is so beautiful because it's not a loss. Men will take it as a loss or a competition or a threat. It is not. It's mm -hmm. like this. If you have any of those confrontations or asks or communications, there's only two outcomes if you're going to think about it correctly for yourself. It's a win or it's a learning experience. Take win either one. Yeah. It's not a loss. You don't need to get mad. Win or it's a learn. Both are really good. I'll take either one. So let's talk about the loving objectively. So she has to be able to do that. You know, back in the fucking cave days, Miss Miss Cave Proud Masculine had to rear children and care for these children and some dangerous like we don't have those dangers don't exist for us anymore. It just doesn't. But the programming is still there. Still okay. There. So Miss Proud Masculine needed the me the cave prop masculine to be, you know, a hunter, gatherer, 
protector, warrior. You know, I had to be able to shoot some kids in her, some healthy kids with good genes that, you know, could think fast, you know, had, didn't get sick all the fucking time because there's no medicine. If you got a cold, you probably died back then. Um, you know, awareness, like you needed longevity, you needed health, you needed all these attributes to survive them. And you also needed the tribe mm. in the you community. Still do. Yeah, well, absolutely. More so than now. More so than now. You know what I mean? A close-knit group of community all the time. You couldn't do anything alone. It was always a, a community effort. So, and so if, you know, Cave Thor couldn't provide, then would like how what was her chances of survival if she just had a fuzzy feeling about you well what if i broke my leg on, on the mastodon hunt yes so okay now this ha there, this happens today this is an uncomfortable truth about objective love but you can look many men and it, it, i'm just speaking in generalities just like the Pareto principle it's the 80 20 bell curve it happens to some men and some women but mostly men Mm. They get sick with cancer later, a little bit later, you know, in their thirties or forties, they lose their job. They struggle along. As soon as they get in a spot, what happens? Almost all of them end up divorced. Something happens. You know, a guy's plugging along. Things seem absolutely fine. Everything's wonderful. He gets laid off. Six months later, his unemployment's out. He hasn't really been able to parlay that into anything other than He's just now got an apprenticeship doing some coding and he's not back to his normal salary level. Mm. Guess what happens? Mm -hmm. it's, she moves on. Survival. She, she gets used to that level and she won't settle for anything less. Once she's had that level, it, it's, and it's really bad if you've let your attraction go down and then physically you're, 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 if you can survive it. You can be wounded, sick, and come back as long as you still exhibit those skills of survival and alpha that you can take care of yourself. You can take care of her and you're still a guy that other men want to be and other men, women want to be with that still keeps her going and staying. Otherwise you, it, it's all too common. I've known many a men you can look up on the internet and some, some of those statistics are quite frightening. Objective love is still alive and it's there, you know, and it has a purpose and it's uh, not and they can they could be you know it's a funny thing you know there's a funny thing that goes on they talk about the seven year itch but look at seven years statistically look at 14 and look at 18 19. those are some pretty hard years i think it might occur again just maybe once but it's not very much of a blip and then after 25 people seem to iron it out but i'm telling you those years where all the brain chemistry's down we're in a routine and somebody might not feel as fulfilled. Well, usually, you know, you're in the routine of raising kids or, or getting along with life. And, and that can suck a lot of your energy yeah. to re maintain your attractiveness and your, your mission, staying on your mission as a man to keep her wanting to be your co-pilot. She'll right. deny it to the day she dies, but she'll deny it. And then she'll sit there and build up all this sexual tension and then she's going to go on a trip with her girlfriends. And then she's going to tell you, I don't know what happened. It just happened. I was drunk. He was hot. And now I love you, but it's like a brother. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in love. I, I love you, but I'm not in love with you. And oh, by the way, there's a giant machine that feeds her fantasy that the grass is greener. I don't care whether you're married or not or in a relationship. The grass is greener. And oh, by the way, I can have anything I want which means I can get a much better mate. Uh, you know, I only live once, let's experience it. Let's not work on this, it's too hard. And uh, let's move on. It, it's all not true. And she'll find out later on what the wall's really all about. But mm. um, it'll be far too late by then. And uh, you know, I don't wanna live with any regrets. Even if I get a no, I'm gonna ask, all right? <laughs> no and what is high, what is hypergamy based on? Everything you're describing. It's based on her biological firmware. Well, doubt, based on doubt, right? And doubt, of course, and her existential fear, right? Existential fear that she didn't get the best mate that can protect her and her offspring to adulthood. 
right? Uh, and of course, our existential fear is that we need to ensure paternity so that our investment is fulfilled. Well, and there comes the idealistic love, right? Right. Um, and yeah, that was it's, a good... it, 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 these are tough things to, to deal with. And then, you know, in another episode, we'll get into monogamy and non-monogamy and the natural state of human beings, quite debatable and controversial, but uh, a lot of truth in there. And if you can accept the truth of how we are, you can live a much more fulfilled life with your girlfriends or your mm -hmm. wife or your long-term relationship. Uh, just accepting the fact that as a human being, you have roles to fulfill. Uh, the universe created men and women on purpose that are different, masculine and feminine. They fit very well together and they, and they give people superpowers when used together properly. When they don't, they explode like a right. bad chemistry experiment, which in a way, it kind of is a bad chemistry experiment if you think about it. <laughs> you got to know how to, how to mix it, how to add the right catalyst, right? Yeah, I mean, like, geez, right. you want some catalysts? Go read Roll's book. He'll give you a few catalysts in there. Uh, and, uh, and then your chemistry experiment will bake a very nice cake with a frosting. Oh, um, yeah. And yeah, that's going to be a good one. Masculine and feminine polarity exist. We are designed to be a complement to one another, not to compete. Good one. Shall we wrap this one up, Joe? Yeah, about that time. All right, man. It's good talking with you. And once again, I just released a free video to everybody out there that's interested in getting in shape and they don't have a lot of money. It's, uh, it's Thor's Viking kettlebell uh, routine. It's one set of kettlebells. It is not cardio. It is not hit. It is the most intense thing you're going to do outside of Brazilian jiu-jitsu wrestling and fighting if you do it correctly. Follow along. It's 21 minutes long. Uh, you just need a kettlebell. And uh, do that three days a week, 21 minutes at a shot. And I guarantee in four weeks, you are going to look totally different. Your metabolism will di be different. You'll feel different. Your functionality will improve. Your life will improve in many, many ways. And that's just the beginning. The next part is we'll hit the weight training after that. But this is a very good exercise. I posted links on how to buy an adjustable kettlebell so you can start with very lightweight, not get injured, and move forward. So I posted that video for free. And uh, there's much more coming. I've shot a complete weight training uh, series uh, without the use of a gym or uh, free weights using bands and a pull-up bar and push-up bars so you can do it at home the whole workout lasts about 40 minutes very very effective i'll tell you i got sore as hell doing it uh, it's in post-production now uh it will be uh available to all the clients at red pill four anybody that books time with me as coaching will have access to that and uh this new viking kettlebell routine is uh just my revamp uh, routine from five years ago it's available to everybody right now on my YouTube channel, Red Pill Thor. Uh, and coming soon will be uh, my website. It's called becomedurable.com. So keep your eye out for that. Good shit. And I too have a uh, a quick workout. You can need to you can need to do it at home. It'll incorporate weights. That uh, it's a video right now. I'm kind of scrubbing and editing. You know how not so good I am at that, but it's coming. We're learning together, Joe. <laughs> yeah, you make you doing better than me. <laughs> He's passing me. Uh, uh, you know what? I I want to get this out there because there's a lot of guys that need it, man. They sit mm. in cubicles and they don't need much, man. Just one or two things, and that's it. Yeah. And then we can go out and we can hunt those damn mammoths again and avoid the cyber cyber tooth tigers. You know. Two videos, real good, minimal shit, no excuses. <laughs> So, um, all right, so we're wrapping it up. Of course, if you want, you know, direction, guidance from Thor, at Red Pill Thor, right? DM, Instagram, right? You bet. And you can get me at ProudMasculine.com. Uh, follow me on Instagram and DM me. Contact me as well at ProudMasculine on Instagram. And until next time. And I, so, look, we already have our topic for next time. That's good. You do. Write it down, Joe. That's a good one. I will. Write it down right now. All right. All right. We'll, we'll see you guys later. Take Thanks. care.